Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm in the kitchen and I'm going to show you how to make my version of jalapeno poppers. So let's get started. So I'm going to start with um, a few slices of bacon. And um, you can just put the slices in the skillet, you know, and then crumble it later. But I'm just going to go ahead and, and cut it into some little tiny um, bit sized pieces. So we, you want to fry your bacon. Now some jalapeno popper recipes um, call for wrapping the jalapenos in a half of a slice of bacon, but I don't like bacon baked. <laughs> I don't like baked bacon. I like it fried. So I decided to fry my bacon first and then we will add it to the stuffing mixture for the jalapeno poppers. <sighs> to save money, I did not buy Oscar Mayer. Is that the name of it? Yeah, I think so. And um, now I regret it because this bacon is mostly just fat. But, I mean, <laughs> I think Oscar Mayer is seven, eight, eight dollars a pan. It may even be ten dollars a pan now. So I bought this um, stop and chop brand. It was still five or six dollars. That's okay. I'm thankful to get it, so I shouldn't even be complaining at all about it. So let's go ahead and fry the bacon and wash my hands real well. So these are the jalapenos that I got out of Jill's Garden the other day. I picked six. So then when I told her I was going to be making the video of the jalapeno popper, she said, oh, Saved me some. So I ran back over to the store and picked up a few more peppers. So what you want to do with your peppers is, um, you don't have to wash them yet. Oh, and my nose is itching. Um, what you want to do is cut, go ahead and cut them in half and leave the stems on them. You don't want to, um, to jeopardize the stuffing coming out the end of it, so you don't want to cut the, the stem off of the pepper. So I went ahead and did all of them but this one so that I can show you how to do it. So just go ahead and cut it in half, and then you will want to scoop out the inside of the pepper. So I just take my knife and just gently cut it out. Try not to cut through the outer can of the pepper because you don't want your stuffing oozing out of it while it's cooking. Okay. And then you will wash these and make sure you get them good and dry because you don't want steamed peppers. <laughs> you want them roasted in a, in a hot oven. Which reminds me I have to turn the oven on. Okay, so let me go ahead and wash it. And dry it. And I will put it in the container with all the other peppers that I've already prepared. Here they are. All nice and cut in half and scooped the hot seeds out of the center. Wash them and dry them. So we're going to set the oven. Let me turn that fan off so y'all can hear me talk. Okay, so I have my bacon nice and crispy. So let me go ahead and remove it from the bacon grease. Um, now the ingredients for this is um, a cup of uh, cheddar cheese, uh, grated. If, if you can, um, you know, keep from it, try not to buy the already grated because it, they put preservatives in it. So I, I prefer the, just, I bought the Cabot Seriously Sharp. This time I just love this cheese. I love the flavor of it, it's so good. So you'll need a eight ounces of that, uh, which I grated. And then you will need an eight ounce package of Philadelphia cream cheese. Y'all, I think I was 50 years old before I realized that they have this easy, to open package. Oh, I used to cut it and slice it this way and split it down the middle and 
then all you have to do is just open it, and I believe it has a, let's see, open along center seam at end. Well, maybe that's the reason I used to cut it and slice it. It's not so easy after all. <laughs> ah, there we go. There, see, there we go. And you do want to let this set out a few hours before you prepare your mixture, or you won't be able to stir it. You don't want to have to be wrestling <laughs> an eight ounce block of um, Philadelphia cream cheese. So I have my bacon nice and crispy and crumbly. Let me move that grease from the burner. So um, I am still trying to finagle this little tripod thingy. Let me see if I can mix up this cheese. So you just want to blend your Philadelphia cream cheese with your cheddar cheese. When I was raising the family, um, I used to love to get in the kitchen and let the children help me make homemade bread. I mean, I would give them a little bit of the dough to, to roll out and all that kind of stuff, just make them feel like they were participating in the bread. And then just the smell of it, that yeast and everything. You know, letting it rise and then baking it and letting the, the aroma fill up your home, the aroma of that homemade yeast. It's just a very warm and comforting and, and a loving feeling in your home. So see, that blended very well. Okay, now to this mixture, um, you want to add, um, I chopped up about four little garlic cloves. So um, I don't really care for raw garlic that much, so I am gonna just saute it for a minute in my bacon grease. And you just use your garlic however your preference is. If you want more than four cloves, then by all means, make more than four cloves. So let me go ahead and uh, I have my pan ready somewhere over here. I still I keep forgetting to buy pan. So what I did, I just took a little bit of butter and just uh, spread it all over my pan very well. So let me just kind of saute the garlic. So it's uh, eight ounces of cheddar cheese grated, one eight ounce package of Philadelphia cream cheese, four cloves of garlic, uh, probably about four or five slices of bacon, fried and crumbled. So what you wanna do is add all of this to the mixture, your cheese mixture, and then we'll stir it up real well and I will um, start stuffing my jalapenos. Make sure um, either wear gloves when you're removing the seeds or wash your hands really, 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 really good. I mean like 20 times <laughs> because uh, those seeds are, are very hot. Okay, so I think that is um, brown enough. Let me go ahead and dump in my bacon. Okay guys, so it shut off because my storage filled up. But I took a few minutes and went ahead and deleted a bunch of stuff, so hopefully it will finish recording this time. So I did put my bacon bits in with the cheese mixture. And uh, what I did, I sauteed the garlic and a little bit of the bacon grease. And then I just added all of that into my cheese mixture. So we want to stir that up very well. And then, um, you know, I'm going to put a little black pepper in it. Everything tastes better with black pepper in it, doesn't it, guys? Um, and then my secret ingredient, my Lee and Perrin's Worcestershire sauce. Just a, a splash or two. And you can add, uh, you know, pimento or just whatever you love uh, to mix with cheese. I mean, I think even the mixture that I made to make the cheese ball for baby Efe's birthday party would be good in the stuffed peppers. So I have this mixed pretty good. 
Now I have my oven set on 400. It's uh, preheating. So I have this mixed very good, and so I'm gonna start stuffing. I'll be back and show you how I'm stuffing them. I don't want you to sit through the entire stuffing process though. I'll be right back. Okay, so what I decided to do is to leave them separated because I don't want them touching one another and then turning out to be all mushy. I want them to kind of crisp up a little bit. So I went ahead and stuffed these and let me show you how I did stuff them. I just stuffed them with a, a spoon, a teaspoon. And you just take out a teaspoon full of the mixture. And then you just kind of press it down into the center of the jalapeno. So I will pop these in the oven, 400 degree oven. I'm gonna start at 20 minutes. I would rather be able to add time later than to burn them because you can't undo that type of mistake. So let's go ahead and put them in my oven, 400 degrees for 20 minutes. And I'll be back with the finished product. Okay, so I checked the jalapeno poppers at 20 minutes. And they just weren't quite brown enough for me, so I set it on another three minutes. So let's turn off the timer and see how they look. Mmm, they do look perfect. Perfect. Okay. Now what I have to do is sprinkle them with some chopped up cilantro. Let's go ahead and do that. Now I will put um, the link for the little mini colanders in my description box below. They are sold on Amazon. So just go ahead and, and sprinkle them. Ooh, I need to chop it some more. <laughs> oh well, this will do. We'll, I'll just get a big um, mouthful of cilantro. I love cilantro, so it's not gonna matter to me. But just go ahead and, and um, you know, use parsley, chives, whatever. Or you can mix up a, you, I saw one recipe, she took some potato chips and crushed them and put those on top. I don't remember if it was before she baked them, I think it was after she baked them, yeah, because I remember her crushing them um, well, after she had put them in the oven. So here they are. I'm going to wait for them to cool for just a second and then I'm going to take one out and eat it. And this is going to be my dinner tonight with a nice salad. It is definitely um, low carb. So it is suitable for my new um, low carb lifestyle plan that I'm trying to follow now. Again, y'all remember back in November, I went on it and it lasted about two weeks. <laughs> I am not good at sticking with a a healthy eating plan. I always get sidetracked and end up eating hot dogs and chili french fries and all that kind of stuff. They sure look good. I'm going to let them, let me put one over here on the plate. And I didn't take out every single seed, so they might still be a little hot and spicy. I just don't know. And I'm thinking maybe, just maybe, <laughs> I might try to decorate them a little bit with a little, um, some baker's twine. I think you can put baker's twine in the oven um, if it is 100% cotton, but I bought this at Dollar Tree, so um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if it's cotton, polyester, or, or what. But I love to decorate my food. So if I was serving, if I were serving this to friends and family, of course I would decorate them with the baker's twine. And then, um, see how pretty they are? <laughs> of course I'm gonna have to remove it now. Just untie the bow, and then let me go ahead and stick a fork in these. Y'all, I gotta get over here and wash dishes. I got so busy making this video, and 
having to run to the store and buy more jalapenos. I haven't even washed up since breakfast. But let me go ahead and... Um, there's always time to do dishes now, ain't there? <laughs> Y'all, I know you're going to want to know about this red lipstick. This is that Boots number 7 that I found on sale at Walgreens that day. Um, it's been difficult for me to locate it on Amazon, but if I can find it, definitely I will link it below in my uh, Amazon store so you can buy it if you want to. But <laughs> I can't even see the name of it, the name of the, the color of the lipstick. I have to take a picture of it with my phone and then blow it up. <laughs> <laughs> like most all of you have to do too, I'm sure. So, don't have my water with me. Here's some water. Uh, yep. I may have to put out some fire here in a minute. Mmm. This is really good. <laughs> it's really, really hot. Oh, gosh. Woo! Where's the fire extinguisher? It's okay. I think, really, you would be, um, maybe, you know, have these for an appetizer with a, a Corona or a glass of wine or something. And if you look, I don't think that I put quite enough filling in there. I think I would have liked to have it maybe running over a little bit with the filling. But, you know, you cook and you live and you learn. <laughs> and when you fail, you just pick yourself up and do better the next time. So let me go and enjoy my jalapeno poppers. I hope you enjoyed my video, and I hope that you will write the recipe down. It will be in the description below. And I will leave the little colanders in the description. And if I can find this Boots number 7 red lipstick, I will leave it in the description. So y'all please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and y'all always just keep on coming back. Bye now.